the year was 1965. Singapore was forced out of Malaysia and left to survive on its own. This was a culmination of countless political and economic differences between Singapore and Malaysia since their merger barely two years before. Singapore's then Prime Minister, Mr Lee Kuan Yew, cried on national television, disappointed that it has come to this. The nation struggled to comprehend the magnitude of this shocking event. And many doubted the small city-state's ability to succeed independently without Malaysia's vast resources. Yet, Singapore knew what it had to prioritize in order to ensure survival. Water was what they needed. But the journey to get this precious resource proved to be darker than expected. The truth is, Singapore has always been dependent on Malaysia for water. In fact, way back in 1927, a water agreement was signed between the municipal commissioners of Singapore and Sultan Ibrahim of Johor. This allowed Singapore to rent 2,100 acres of land in Gunong Pulai to supply raw water from the area to Singapore. Singapore paid an annual rent of 30 sen per acre, and in return, it received the raw water for free. Under this agreement, Johor also paid a daily rate of 25 sen per 1,000 gallons for 800,000 gallons of treated water from Singapore. More than three decades later, a second water agreement between Singapore and Johor was signed, giving Singapore the exclusive right to draw water from designated areas until 2011. In return, Singapore would pay 3 sen per 1,000 gallons of raw water drawn. Johor was supplied treated water daily, at a price of 50 sen per 1,000 gallons. If this amount was insufficient, Johor could request for more treated water to be supplied. The agreement replaced the 1927 agreement and came into effect on September 1, 1961. In 1962, another water agreement was signed between the City Council of Singapore and the government of Johor, allowing Singapore to draw 250 million gallons of water per day from the Johor River. This agreement was valid for a whopping 99 years until 2061, giving Singapore ample access to water resources. In exchange, Johor received a daily supply of treated water from Singapore, equivalent to 2% of the raw water supply. Singapore paid Malaysia rent for the land used, and 3 sen per 1,000 gallons of raw water supplied. While Malaysia paid Singapore 50 sen per 1,000 gallons of treated water that Johor received. This agreement laid the foundation for a long-lasting partnership between the two nations, or at least that was what Singapore hoped for. The agreements made in 1961 and 1962 had a provision for a price revision to be carried out after 25 years. And this clause later proved to be a source of contention, which we will discover later. In case the negotiations between the two parties failed, arbitration was the agreed-upon method to resolve the issue. Yet, with Singapore's expulsion from Malaysia in 1965, they were no longer guaranteed a reliable source of water despite the earlier agreements. Counting on the water agreements would be a gamble because Malaysia could easily cut off the water supply any time. Since Singapore is now an independent nation with no ties to Malaysia. And so, Singapore came up with a genius idea. As part of the separation agreement signed with Malaysia, which established Singapore as a sovereign and independent nation. Singapore ensured that the separation agreement guaranteed that Malaysia would continue to allow Singapore to have access to Johor's raw water as per the water agreements signed previously. This guarantee was also enacted into the Malaysian constitution by an act of parliament. In addition, the separation agreement was registered at the United Nations, which meant that both countries had to honor the sanctity of the agreement. This also effectively ensured that Malaysia could not unilaterally raise the price of water. And this proved to be a masterstroke decades later, so stay tuned to find out why. Right off the bat, water became a source of conflict between Malaysia and the newly minted city-state of Singapore. In August 1965, then Malaysia Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman was reported to have mentioned that if Singapore's foreign policies were not favorable to Malaysia, they could cut off the water supply to Singapore to exert pressure on the small nation. This was a prelude to what was to come over the next few decades. In November 1990, Singapore's Public Utilities Board and the Johor government extended the expiry of the 1962 water agreement to 2061. Under this revised agreement, Singapore was permitted to construct a dam across Sungai Lingju to extract water from the Johor River, with Johor providing about 21,600 hectares of land for the project. Although the ownership of the Lingju Dam is under Johor, the construction and operating costs for the dam were fully paid for by Singapore. 
Johor was compensated 320 million ringgit, which included annual rent for the land occupied by a water treatment plant and the cost of other ancillary works. In return, Singapore could purchase raw water from Johor, beyond the 250 million gallons of raw water it was allowed to draw from the Johor River under the original 1962 agreement. The price of this additional supply was determined by a formula based on Johor's water tariffs, the Public Utilities Board's cost of distribution, and the surplus from the sale of this water. The agreement was a result of six years of difficult negotiations and was seen as a major breakthrough in bilateral relations for both countries. But alas, the inevitable happened. The dispute over water between Singapore and Malaysia peaked between 1998 and 2002 when then Prime Minister, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, was at the helm. It started during the Asian financial crisis between 1997 and 1998. Malaysia had approached Singapore for aid in a form of a financial assistance package. However, the talk soon expanded to include the supply of water to Singapore after the expiration of the current water agreements. In a twist of events, Dr. Mahathir later informed then Singapore Prime Minister, Mr. Go Chok Tong, that Malaysia no longer required financial assistance. Instead, Dr. Mahathir proposed to bundle several outstanding bilateral issues in a package for both countries to address. In August 2000, then Senior Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, agreed with Dr. Mahathir on the list of bilateral issues to be included in the package, which included the price of water and the future supply of raw water to Singapore. In a letter to Mr. Lee, Dr. Mahathir expressed his view that the fair price of raw water should be 60 sen per 1,000 gallons, and that the price should be reviewed every five years. Malaysia felt that a price review was necessary as the existing price of 3 sen was far too low and did not take inflation into account over the years. Although Singapore was under no legal obligation to pay a higher price for water, Mr. Lee offered to pay 45 sen for the raw water supplied by Johor instead of the original 3 sen, and 60 sen for the additional raw water supplied between 2011 to 2061, as well as between 2061 to 2161. Singapore was willing to make the concession in exchange for the assurance of continued supply of raw water for another 100 years after the expiry of the 1962 water agreement. These terms were agreed upon in a meeting in Kuala Lumpur between Mr. Lee and Dr. Mahathir, and were widely reported in the media of both countries. However, things took a shocking turn. In March 2001, Malaysia submitted a fresh proposal to Singapore which deviated completely from the earlier consensus. For starters, it was proposed that the price of water be increased to 60 sen starting from 2002 to 2007, and subsequently increased to 3 ringgit per 1,000 gallons between 2007 to 2011. Malaysia also proposed that the price of water be adjusted for inflation annually from 2011 till the water agreement expires in 2061. In addition, Malaysia requested for the proposed price of 60 sen for raw water to be applied retrospectively from 1986 and 1987 under both water agreements respectively. This meant that Singapore would have to pay Malaysia the accumulated difference in the price for raw water that they have received over the last 15 years. Lastly, Malaysia suggested only commencing negotiations for the future supply of water in 2058, just three years before the expiry of the agreement in 2061. It was also proposed that the future water agreement be valid till 2102 and take effect from 2002. This effectively limited the future agreement's length to only 40 years, a duration far shorter than what Singapore had in mind. Moreover, kickstarting negotiations so near to the agreement's expiry was a little too close for comfort for Singapore. It was clear that the new proposals were not tenable. In order not to put a constant strain on its bilateral relations with Malaysia, Singapore informed its neighbor that the city-state will supplement the water agreements. It would start producing its own water supply by building a desalination plant and ramping up the production of new water, which was recycled water using advanced membrane technologies. In subsequent ministerial meetings with Singapore, Malaysia again revised the proposed price of water, this time to 6.25 ringgit which they rationalized as a peg to the average cost of new water and desalination, which Singapore felt was not a fair price. By now, negotiations have hit a stalemate. Things escalated when the Malaysian media and political leaders purported that Singapore had profited massively from the low price of raw water purchased from Johor, as a result of the unfair terms in the water agreements.
To counter what Singapore felt as baseless claims, Singapore released a series of letter correspondences between the two countries, proving that Singapore had been willing to accede to the request to review the price of water, if not for the frequent changes in Malaysia's proposed prices. Singapore's position was clear. Malaysia could not unilaterally change the price of water because the water agreements were guaranteed in the separation agreement with the Malaysian government. While Singapore is ready to review the price, it had to be done on mutually accepted terms. It would not be sustainable if the small nation were to agree to every price revision that Malaysia asks for. Moreover, Singapore maintained that under the price review clause in the water agreements, Malaysia could have reviewed the price of water in 1986 and 1987 which were the 25th year marks of each of the two water agreements. However, Malaysia did not exercise the right and therefore, could no longer do so. But the point of contention, was the interpretation of the clause in the water agreements. Malaysia believed that the clause meant that the price of water could be reviewed any time after the 25th year mark, and not at the 25th year mark. The truth is, when read at face value, the clause is indeed ambiguous and it is understandable why both countries had different interpretations of it. Singapore also clarified that it is in fact making a loss of 1.90 ringgit when selling treated water to Malaysia at 50 sen, because it costs more to treat every 1,000 gallons of water. This was contrary to Malaysian media reports indicating that Singapore is making a profit from buying raw water cheaply and selling treated water to Johor at a higher price. Ironically, Johor was selling the same treated water to Johorians at a much higher price than they paid Singapore, which meant that they were making a profit instead. The cost of treated water that Singapore was charging was clearly favorable to Johor as they had asked to buy even more treated water from Singapore. Beyond the limits set in the water agreements, which Singapore had acceded to out of goodwill. Interestingly, both Dr. Mahathir and the leaders of Johor had also admitted that the very reason why they did not review the price of water in 1986 and 1987 was because they were concerned that Singapore would raise the price of treated water correspondingly, which would not be in Malaysia's favor. However, there were more twists and turns in this story. First, Dr. Mahathir stepped down as minister in 2003, leading to tensions over the issue of water subsiding. Singapore also allowed the 1961 water agreement to lapse in 2011, as part of its efforts to reduce its reliance on Malaysia for water. This meant that only the 1962 water agreement was left. During this period, bilateral relations improved. In 2016, Malaysia's Prime Minister Mr Najib Razak even committed that Malaysia would continue to supply raw water to Singapore, even though the water level at Lingju Reservoir was receding. But once again, the story took another dramatic turn. In the 2018 Malaysian general elections, Dr Mahathir unexpectedly defeated Mr Najib, which placed him back into power as Prime Minister for the second time. With Dr Mahathir back as Prime Minister of Malaysia, the water dispute was revived. Mr Mahathir once again criticised the insanely low price that Singapore was paying for the water and sought to renegotiate the deal. On the other hand, Singapore maintained that Malaysia had already lost its right to review the price. It was widely reported that Malaysia would seek international arbitration if there was no progress in the negotiation with Singapore but this never materialised. Before things escalated further, another shocking chain of events happened. A political turmoil in Malaysia saw Dr Mahathir resign as Prime Minister, which served to quell the conflict over water between the two nations. Nonetheless, after the various episodes that Singapore had experienced, it is evident that the city-state needed to act quickly to ensure that its fate is in its own hands. Hence, over the years, Singapore has invested millions of dollars each year to build up its water infrastructure, including water pumps, pipes, as well as desalination, and new water plants. The aim is to rely on desalination and new water to meet the majority of Singapore's water demand when the 1962 water agreement expires in 2061. Singapore had also increased the number of reservoirs it has to 17, which cover two-thirds of Singapore's land surface, to collect rainwater for potable consumption. Evidently, Singapore is not a sitting duck. And with its track record, it wouldn't be a surprise that it would soon become self-sufficient for its water needs. But did you know that besides the water issue, the reappointment of Dr Mahathir in 2018 also affected the progress of the Johor Bahru Singapore RTS rail project? Watch this video to find out more.